The Small Business Show, episode 342 for Wednesday, August 25th, 2021. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, where we are small businessing. I was going to say where we are small businessing every week. Really, we're kind of small businessing all the time. And Every then we, single day. We stop to talk about it <laughs> once a right. week is uh, is generally how it goes. Sponsors for this episode include LinkedIn.com slash SBS, where you can go post your first job for free. We will talk more about that in a minute. For now, small businessing here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And coming to you from smoky California, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, man? I'm doing all right. I'm supposed to go to Portland and then Tahoe oh, next week. Well, so, uh, yeah. We'll see how that evolves. That's right. Yeah. Air quality, uh, not so good out here right yeah, now. And that sucks. Uh, but uh, you know, thank goodness we have all those wonderful people out there. But, you know, thank goodness we have all those first responders and firefighters helping to try to keep control of all these fires. Yeah. No here. kidding. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 For sure, man. And that's that California has a fire season now, but uh, yeah, it's not a show about fire. So uh, what are we talking about today, Dave? We are talking, well, we got a question in, we're going to talk about credit cards and financing. One of our favorite oh, topics. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love rewards, credit cards. And I just actually just got another one, a different one for, for me, for one of the businesses. So uh, nice. So I'll, I'll share that as we sort of go through that uh, in a little bit. The first thing, though, is I wanted to answer a question. Scott wrote in and asked, what is the best office phone system to use? And it's sort of an open ended question. question. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, there's um, I know Scott has a remote business kind of like what I run here. Some people have, of course, retail, you know, brick and mortar businesses where you might need something a little bit different Your offices. Right. Yeah. But um, I, phone systems are an interesting thing. I'm I, I the phone system has always the phone system in general has always interested me. And I've always had different kinds of things going on uh, for the businesses. For the past few years, I've been using a system called phone dot com. Oh, OK. And it's great because it gives me. It, you know, a virtual PBX, if you will. Right. Yeah, I have great. one number for the company. I added a fax number to it. Uh, everything routes through it. It's got voicemail. It's got all kinds of different things. And I can, you know, I can route things the way that I want. Everybody can control things the way that they want. They have a really robust phone management system where you're almost, it's almost like you're programming if you want to, it doesn't have to be that complex, but you can really build scripts with it so that, you know, if a call comes in and this person is unavailable because they're in this time zone and they're unavailable outside of these hours, it goes to this it place. Is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, and I can even have it if, uh, you know, if it, it, I could have it, I don't have it set up this way where if, if somebody calls, it rings all of our cell phones until one of us picks up and then it, it hangs up the rest of them, which is kind of cool, you know? So yeah, yeah, there's different, it's great. It's cool. I I agree that that question is so open-ended, you know, what type of phone system really depends on what type of of business you're in. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I have a, you know, one of the, my favorite comments about the phone is that in this day and age, answering the phone is really a way to distinguish yourself from other companies. Right. Yeah. Uh, it, it's really common that small, small businesses that have people out in the field and maybe don't have enough, you know, have, have a staff person or whoever to answer the phone that just rolls to voicemail and then you have to wait for a callback. Uh, and then it's also very, very common that large, large, large businesses, nobody answers the phone either. So if you can answer the phone, it, it can really be a great marketing tool, a great way to connect with your customers. Yeah. Uh, and having a virtual system can really help you do that. Uh, you know, I, I've been around long enough to where I spent a insane amount of money on a PBX system, an, an that, actual PBX. Oh, yeah. yeah. Massive. Yeah. And, and used it now, you know, it was about $30,000, but I did use it for, you know, a couple of decades that it just performed, you know, amazingly. However, the virtual stuff at like phone.com ring central grasshopper, 
uh, one I like is aircall.io because they tie into your CRM, you know, your customer relationship management. Uh, So you can roll those calls right into your contact list and your, you know, your sales funnel and all that kind of stuff, I think, which is really cool. Um, That to me, if I was looking at these cloud-based virtual systems that will just do jump through any hoops, it, it has to tie into whatever your CRM is because having to go use another system is, you mean, not, a, not as ideal. So if you can, I think that's a great way to do it. That is, uh, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I like it. And then, you know, so I, I would investigate those things, you know, Scott. And then one comment I've had just from experience is, because there will be times when you can't answer the phone or calls will get routed and there won't be someone available or it's the middle of the night, always be sure you assign a person to every voicemail box that, that don't have a generic general voicemail that no, that just get ignored. It's a, it's a recipe for disaster. I thought so-and-so was going to do it. I thought, no, if you know, you're in charge of this Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you're in charge of whatever, however you want to split it up. But you have to make uh, those voicemail boxes accountable uh, by assigning people to them. Yeah, and if you're going to, and and I I haven't done this with phone calls, but I suppose there would be a way. I've done it with emails where you have a a blanket address that something comes into that goes to multiple people. If you're gonna do that, uh, use a ticketing system like a, a fresh desk or yeah. something, so that yeah. it you know you know did someone else get this? There's no guess of well, I know it's forwarded yeah. to everyone, so I'm assuming one of the other six people got it. No, no. Look in the system. Did somebody yeah. pick that ticket up? If not, and it's still open, well, guess what? It's yours. You know, yeah, I'm sure your your phone.com or aircall.io yeah. grass. I'm sure they do the same same thing because yeah. that concept is really important. It's really important. Yeah. You, you don't yeah. want something to just fall through the cracks. That's well, right. Well, you need that history. You know, if you're having a customer service issue and they're trying to call and you look at it and go, oh, wow, you need to know, boy, they've called eight times. Yeah. Right. That's right. a different customer service management uh, technique than the customer who's just called the first time. That's right. Right. And so by the eighth time you've made a mistake and have, you've captured, you've taken the wrong token, I would argue. <laughs> go, go search for the, the two tokens, uh, uh, concept of customer service up at business show.co to learn about why those things should be resolved real quickly. And, uh, you can thank us later. Yeah, that's right. Cause that's you'll right. avoid having that eight, that eighth call. I have so. I, for people that are running their, even for your home phone, Uh, To be honest, if you want to have some kind of landline experience in your home or your, you know, your single person office, let's say um, I have moved now. And I did this a couple of years ago because I was sick and tired of paying. You know, we stopped paying for an actual landline probably a decade ago and moved it to a voice, a VoIP line through uh, Xfinity, which was our Internet provider at the time. But I, you know, I was still paying them. It turned out 20 bucks a month or something for that. Yeah. And so what I did was I moved my Xfinity line to a Google voice line. I ported the number over to Google voice. It, I, I had to do it. Um, and the reason I ported to Google voice is because Google voice is free. Right. Uh, yep. And so, but I, I, you can't port directly from a VoIP line to Google voice. So I ported to T-Mobile because they had a cheap, like $4 SIM card. So I ported to that to pay, I paid the $4. I got a number from T-Mobile. It, I ported my thing to that. And then from T-Mobile, I ported uh, into Google voice. Once I had it in Google voice, I bought this $50 little box called the OB 200, uh, which I believe Polycom now owns. And it has power jack it's got an ethernet port and a phone jack on it so rj45 and an rj11 you plug one end into your router you plug your phone into the other end and then you link that up with your google voice number when google voice rings it rings your landline in your house Oh, that's great which is great and it cost me nothing there's no monthly fees so it was 20 bucks to port it 50 bucks for the device four dollars for the t-mobile thing so for less than 75 dollars which for us was about three and a half months of yeah. of you know paying comcast that problem went away about two years ago so i'll put a link to that ob200 yeah do that is there a uh 
a fee for that T-Mobile SIM? Or you're just paid? I, I, uh, I paid four dollars for it. It was a, a, a you oh. know a trial SIM or something. I got you. That, oh, and, so you just I, I just needed it for a few days. Is really all uh, I did. I, I needed to port yeah, yeah, the number yeah. so that it was in T-Mobile's system because Google could slurp from T-Mobile. Google couldn't slurp from oh, Xfinity. Yeah. So that I was see. the that was the trick. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. Yeah, that's that, great. That, that thing's great. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're a phone person, if you know a lot about phone systems, you know, feedback at businessshow.co, send us some info, and we will uh, share it with um, other small business owners. Yeah, we'll share it with everybody. Yeah, it's great. Hey, I want to talk about our sponsor uh, for this week, which is LinkedIn at LinkedIn or LinkedIn Jobs at LinkedIn.com slash SBS. And it's because as business owners, small business owners especially, we are more involved with our businesses than ever. I don't like to say busier than ever. I like to say more productive than ever, but it is time consuming that productivity often and time spent searching for and interviewing the wrong candidates for a job opening is time that we could better spend on growing our businesses, right? Better to work on the business than in the business. And that's why LinkedIn jobs has made it easier to get to the candidates worth interviewing faster. And it's free. I know it's crazy. We talked about this a couple of months ago when we hired a podcast public publicist. It turned out to be Sadie, who has been on the team now for a few months. We found Sadie through LinkedIn jobs and it was a remarkably wonderful experience. We got so many good candidates and, uh, and obviously narrowed it down to uh, narrowed it down to a handful that were spectacular and, and chose Sadie as, uh, as you know, and you can create your free job post in minutes on LinkedIn jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 750 million people. And you get to focus on the candidates with the skills and the experience you need. And you can use screening questions that they let you set up to get your role in front of only the most qualified people. And then you can use their filters and everything to prioritize who you want to hire or interview. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates worth interviewing faster. And did you know that every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Yeah. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash SBS. That's linkedin.com slash SBS to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply, of course, and our thanks to LinkedIn jobs for sponsoring this episode. Very cool stuff. Yeah. Those guys are awesome. Yeah. It's great. It's great. It's great. All right. So let's talk credit cards, man. Yeah, this is a great topic. We we've we've done a well, we haven't done an episode on this topic in a long time. Uh, might might be over a year, maybe even a couple. Well, I of years. think it's a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, we talk about living a charmed life and all the benefits of being a small business owner all the time. And this topic that we're going to dive into now is definitely up there on you know. Uh, enriching your lifestyle, uh, living a before tax life. We, we alluded to it in the show last week. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah, man. Do you have a, um, how do you want to proceed here? Do you have a favorite card you want to well, recommend so or do you have a path before, you want to recommend? Yeah. Let's, let, let's talk about the concept first Yeah, and then we can talk about some cards. Um, you know, your business always needs money. I mean, it's just, you're, you're paying bills, you're paying expenses and everything. And by using, specific types of credit cards uh, wisely to finance your purchases, your expenses, uh, you know, you can just really, really benefit. And we're going to talk about those benefits and we're going to focus on the business side of it. You can, and you should use these same tactics in your personal life, but it's really your business that has that cash flow engine yeah. that's really going to crank up the benefits for you, right? It's true. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, and, yeah. And it, I mean, if you're spending a lot of money in your personal life, th then you'll see the same rewards come through. But like you said, you know, it's your business where you've got your hosting costs and you're this and you're that. Everything. And just the things yep. that you're monthly recurring expenses are the things you really need yes. to focus on with this because those are the things that mound up over time. Certainly yeah. the big expenses when you buy a new computer, or you buy that $30,000 phone system that Shannon had or, you, you know, those it. sorts of things. Those are great too, but it's those monthly recurring expenses. I always have joked, if I could put payroll on my credit card, man, I would. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I and would. I'm going to talk to, uh, 
use some examples of expenses and uh, yeah. at some v- pretty big numbers that have really, you know, helped me in, in uh, my life for sure. And now the type of cards we're talking about are affinity or cards with points and benefits, uh, yeah. airline miles, hotel credits, cash back, you know, you can do gift cards on, on a number of them. Those types of benefits are typically not taxed, right? Um, you should ask your not accountant. Yet. But, not yet. <laughs> yeah. But you, I, I, it's probably worth having a discussion if you really push this cash back rewards because you can generate a significant amount of cash if you play this game right. Yeah. Um, and the, the thing about these cards is they allow you to massively upgrade your lifestyle without paying cash, without having to pay for it. Even, you know, we talked about pre-tax cash with your company leasing you a vehicle or expenses and travel. This is even better because you're going to be out nothing, right? Right. Um, if you're if travel is your thing, airlines and hotels, there's specific cards that we're going to talk about here that that are really beneficial. Cash back is huge, and I would say that's grown a lot. Big time. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm surprised time. at this. Yeah. Well, me too. But some people, you know, that, that's what they're that's what we're looking for. And it um but there's added benefits by using some of these travel cards that I really like. Um, there's a ton of gift card benefits that you can figure it out, you know, um, that, that we'll go into a little bit more. But we talked about like expenses with your business, right? Yep. It's, and if you're like a, uh, I've, I've been in product business my whole life, so I'm buying products from people too. And, you know, I was buying from Apple at times where they were happy to take my credit card for $150,000, $200,000 purchase. Wow. Well, that's a lot of points. That's a lot of points. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, my, our, our shipping, our monthly shipping bill split between uh, FedEx, UPS, and DHL typically was two hundred dollars to $250,000 at the height of that business. Got it. Right. Yeah. Every one of them. Now, you may have to negotiate to get them to take your credit card because uh, sometimes it was, and I can remember FedEx was no problem. UPS, we had to, hey, we wanted we we only you know want to pay. We'll do this, sign this contract, and do all these things. But it has to go on our American Express, uh, and and be be know, ready to stand for that. Uh, absolutely, I, I've I've done that a few times. It's like, well, you know, the way we're going to finance this expense is by putting it on that card, and and just you know. I, I'm a in in those moments. I'm a fan of the silent close. You know the he, yeah. he who speaks next loses. Right. You know it's like this is right. how we're going to pay. We've already negotiated the price. This is how we're going to pay for it. And you just yeah, wait there. St- yeah. Right. And since we're all business owners listening to this, or or you know, some aspiring business owners, there's a fee associated with taking this card. You know when you're running that card, especially an affinity card, it's more expensive for the merchant to take that card. Yeah. And the Uh, merchant pays, you know, just to highlight the point you just made, Shannon, the merchant, or if you are the merchant taking these cards, you pay more for, uh, for the, like you are buying those hotel points for the person that is using the card. That's how it works. Yeah. Credit card industry. It's a, a great gig. It's <laughs> a know, great for, gig. For them. Yeah. 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 So, you know, all like every single expense that you can imagine, your electrical bill for your building, uh, if you can pay your rent, sometimes uh, landlords would be happy just to set up in a portal and go, um, you know, your automobile, if you have a fleet of autos uh, that you're leasing, you've got maintenance and expenses, gas, all those things should be funneled into these benefit accounts for you as the business owner. You're taking the risk all the time. You got right. guys out in the field driving these vans around doing whatever. You're taking the risk. You're making sure those payments are all made, the you know, purchasing or leasing them. Those benefits can come back to you as the central uh, account holder. Now, it all sounds great, but of course, you have to have the cash to pay these off and not just monthly, okay? I'm, I'm going to make it really clear here. If you can't pay these cards off at the every single month, you should not use this technique because these cards are crazy expensive when it comes to interest. They're typically 15 to 30%, these affinity cards. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, and Yeah, there, there is a second way that they make money with these cards. <laughs> That's yeah, right. Exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. So, but not only do you need to really maximize this concept? You don't, 
you can't wait to just pay them off every month because your limit is not, especially when you're just getting started, your limit isn't going to be high enough to make it work. So when I say our, you know, monthly shipping costs were $250,000 at some point, well, at that point, and I, we were using American Express, and we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. You know, I, I didn't have a $250,000 limit on my American Express, but UPS, FedEx, DHL, they would bill, you know, every few days you'd cycle through a bill that would hit your card. Yep. So we would have to go up and make those payments. And I'm talking what it's referred to as interstatement payments. It's a critical part of making this concept work. If you see a card that has a great offer, you want to be sure you can make interstatement payments because if you can't, that's what, how they're slowing you down. Mm. They're only allowing you to make a monthly payment. Well, that card is, can be worthless. I mean, not worthless, but you know, if you get a ten thousand dollar limit, okay, well, that's it. You know, there's no upside beyond that until you can start asking. Okay, I want a higher limit. This this kind of thing, but to sure. maximize to maximize it, you want to make those interstate you know interstatement payments, and you know we would pay our Amex every twenty four hours. You know, the minute the bill came, charge the card, pay the card, charge the card, pay the card, uh, and that's fascinating. You know, yeah, it makes sense. I I've never done it. I, I've done it maybe weekly. Uh, yeah, at sure. times, but I've never done it every day. But I mean, it makes sense. Like if that, if, well, we if, didn't have it, so it was. You either, don't have it, yeah, yeah. If I, I didn't have that limit, now there are. The, we're going to talk about American Express. One of the things I love about Amex is there really is no set limit. It is based on your ability to pay. So as you get started, and they see this cash flow, well, they will rack your limit way, way up. And uh, I'm going to tell you how to get that maxed up as well as as we go on. But interstatement payments really important. The, the other thing that I want to make sure people know, and, and if I'm wrong about this, I want to be corrected, Shannon, if you know better ways. Uh, but I, as a small business owner, I've never gotten to the point, and, and I've never really pushed for this either, to be fair. But certainly when I was starting out, and even today, any of the credit cards that I get for my business are secured by me. They are based on my credit rating. And so they, you know, they are on my, my personal credit report. And, uh, and, and so you just need to bear that in mind that if yes, you're, yeah. if your company, if you have financial problems with the company, you are personally are the ones securing those lines of credit. Um, there, there yeah. are ways to earn credit with your company. I, I haven't headed down that path. Have you, have you ever, and I realize it's a little bit of a detour, but. Yeah, we've we had a few cards and there's a there's a couple of types of American Express based solely on your business that okay. you know. But uh, getting away from that personal guarantee in anything is very difficult. Very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very difficult. Yeah. And you know, uh and cuz if if you're not willing to do it, they want to know why. They, they want they, Yeah, what's the problem? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, why don't you believe in this company? That's right. Yes. Yeah. 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 So and you know, we, we're talking about which cards, uh, you know, th that's kind of like the phone system. Which cards are best for you depends on what your needs are. You know, when my wife and I were younger, didn't have kids, well, it was all about travel. So we focused on maximizing, you know, what travel airline and hotel uh, cards could we get to really take advantage of it? Because we traveled like crazy. And we, you know, we traveled first class. We stayed in crazy hotel rooms that I would never pay cash for. Uh, and it was awesome, but it is awesome. I know it's yeah, great. It it's, it's tremendous. It's tremendous. You yeah. Know, uh, yeah. I mean, when you, when you fly, you know, to Europe and you fly first class and they want to know what time you want your massage, that's cool. Right. And I, in the back of my head, I'm like, well, this is awesome. Cause I didn't, I mean, I, I took the risk and I did pay for it through my card, but I did not buy that ticket. And right. It's really, really nice. It is really um, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But as you get, now, you know, as, as things changed in my life and my daughter, like, for example, started college in New York City living there. Well, JetBlue was the best airline for us to get back and forth, New York City to the Bay Area. And so I looked around and, you know, JetBlue has a credit card, of course, through Barclays and their points are very generous. They and are so very generous. Yep. We switched over to our JetBlue and I started using that for one of my other businesses so we could build up those points 
So she could go back and forth and we would fly out, you know, every Thanksgiving uh, and it worked out great. Well, now she's done. Now I'm looking at, okay, what's the next thing? You know, what's the, uh, you know, if you have a house and you're, you know, doing a bunch of renovating or maybe that's your business, right? Well, then you should, maybe should look and see what the trade-off on points versus like Home Depot or Lowe's gift cards yeah. are with these various things. Because I know, you know, a few people that have gotten tens of thousands of dollars in those kind of gift cards to help remodel, you know, their homes. I, yeah, I started with the Citibank Advantage MasterCard, the American Airlines one, and I did that with all of the businesses, and that worked really well for me for a, a long period of time. I was flying routes that American, you know, serviced, so it was really easy to take advantage of the upgrades and all of that stuff. And then it didn't take very long. One day I got an email. It was actually in my spam folder. And it said, congratulations, you've reached the Million Miler Club, or you, you oh, entered the cool. Million Miler Club. And I thought, wow, I haven't flown a million miles. I, th I thought, oh, wait, but I've spent a million dollars. Got it. Because yeah, you earn yeah. a dollar a mile. Now, they don't oh, yeah. they don't qualify you for the Million Miler Club that way anymore. Uh, but those of us that got it that way are, are grandfathered yeah. in. Yep. Um, and then, but then you got to keep an eye on... What I always do, not always, but, you know, a couple times a year, I do the math. I look at what am I about to spend these points on and what right. would the dollar amount be and how, like, what am I paying per point? And sometimes yeah. it doesn't make sense. You know, right. it's you, not worth it. It's yeah. not worth it. You, and you got to kind of keep that in mind for yourself. Um, and so then I moved from the... Uh, Citibank, the American Airlines cards to the, the well, what now is the Marriott Bonvoy. It was the American Express Starwood card for a long yes. time, and, and it became the, the Bonvoy one. Uh, and that's been, as far as travel cards go, that one's been fantastic. I With I one of the card. businesses, I have the JetBlue card. I've found that it is helpful. I also have a United card with, with another business. Uh, and really what those get me are the, um, you know, you, you don't pay for luggage, you don't. Yeah, that's pay, cool. Right. You know, like there there are perks, even if you're not using the points, just having the card. Now, you are most likely paying an annual fee for these things. So you want to make sure you use it enough that that, that they use the perks enough that it makes sense. But for a seventy five dollar annual fee and twenty five bucks every time I would check a bag, all I got to do is, you know, have to check three bags on United and I'm good. JetBlue right. is, is a little bit different. But, you know, that like you look at the whole package with the travel cards, not just the rewards points you get. Cause you might get early boarding. You might get the ability to yeah. reserve a seat uh, without, you, you know, without having to pay extra for it. Those sorts of things. The jet blue card qualifies you, I think for blue plus at the same price as blue or something like that. There's, there's, oh, you'll there's, even get like, yeah. I mean, I, I, we just went through an experience with, you know, canceled flights and this, yeah. and when my daughter was calling, it was a 45 minute wait. And when Renee called, because she's a uh, gold, uh, what do they call that? Mosaic member, yeah. which is their, their program. Her wait was like three minutes. That's right. So yeah, so look it, at, look at yeah, what it cool. gets you. But you know, we, uh, I needed another card and I needed a MasterCard for, or a, a not American Express card, I should say. Yeah. For one of the businesses, because we we have somebody in Canada and, you know, American Express is it's American. It's not Canadian. And so there's not a whole lot of options to use it there. So it was like, oh, OK, I'll go get a, a you know, a MasterCard. And I thought, well, I'll just get the Citibank one because I've, I've had that with other businesses. And I thought, well, let me take a look. And in doing the research sort of fresh, the, you're right. Uh, uh, your comment about these cash back cards, it's really interesting. And they're not always cash. That's the thing you want Correct. to look at because getting cash back to your point might be a taxable event, but getting gift cards or using that quote unquote cash back to fund a travel balance with which you are yeah. buying a hotel. That's right. Right. Give like, you statement credit. You yeah. get a state. Yeah. So there's, there's different ways of, of utilizing that cash back and I'm eager to try it. We wound up going with the, uh, the chase Inc business unlimited card. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, that one seemed, I'm curious to see, cause it's a very different experience for me, right? With, with all the other ones I mentioned, I earn points at a very specific brand, and I know how to spend those points. This is going yeah. to be far more open-ended. And so I'm curious to see what it's like to manage that process with those points, uh, you know, that we're earning and, and that sort of thing. But 
Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and, and be we're we're setting up a, a page on at businessshow.co to uh, list these credit card you know information and you know, be a great place to update your experience or how it worked for you. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I will. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be sure to uh, to to share my share my experiences here. There you yeah. go. Yeah. yeah. So the specific types of cards, I, I really love American Express um, for a couple of reasons. One is they allow those interstatement payments as often as you want to make them every 24 hours. Um, but they're also, in my experience, have been the most uh, understanding of small businesses. They they are the quickest to assign you a representative once you've yep. hit a certain level. So you have somebody you can just call or email. Uh, there is no set limit. You can provide your financials and they will set your, you know, your spending based on that. Uh, as you, you know, progress, because if you start out, you may start out low, but every 30 days you can request a uh, limit increase until you get to at least where you want to go. And then they'll just start, they'll just start giving it to you. Um, I have that Bonvoy card that used to be the Marriott uh, or the uh, American Express Starwood. Yeah. I love that card. There's some tremendous benefits. It, it's I still say, my default that, yeah. that Bonvoy card for it, sure. It's, the golden age of that card, I think, has kind of passed. Uh, sort but, of. Yeah. Sort but of, they've, uh, they've got me roped into it. Like I'm I'm yes, really used to yes. the benefits that I get. Me too. Me too. <laughs> there are some really great benefits. And if you love to travel, if you love upgrades, uh, if you want to stay in better hotel rooms, if you want to fly, you know, fly on on the nicer flights, th that that is just some a card I think everybody can have or should have. Um the the standard American Expresses have their membership rewards programs, and there are some benefits to that that you can look into if, you know, it's a little more open. But there are bonuses when you use that Bonvoy, Marriott, Starwood, American Express that uh, are unlike any other card. Um, the, uh, you know, one of the big ones is when you transfer points out to an airline partner, they, they give you a 5,000 point bonus for every 25,000 points you transfer. So it's, uh, it's fantastic. It really helps you build up your points to get better flights. There were people, that's why I moved to that one because I had yeah. the American, the American airlines one. And I realized, wait a minute, if I spend the money on the Bonvoy card, I get an extra 25% coming in and oh. uh, at earning towards that second million mile mark. It was like, well, yeah, that's the yeah. way easier way to get the there, deal, man. That's, that's the deal. The yeah. Deal. So yeah. Learning, learning these ins and outs, it really, yeah. Yeah. For sure. I, I also am, have seen far more bonuses offered now when you sign up the cart, the, these, uh, affinity cards, they seem to be, have gotten pretty competitive. So, you know, I was just at the giants game, uh, last week oh, nice. and you know there was a hundred thousand uh point bonus when you signed up for a particular uh chase uh cart uh cashback card and i thought i was like man that's a that's pretty significant that's a lot know? now yeah. lots of limits on the card and, and that's what i would suggest is you really got to break it down you almost have to build yourself a spreadsheet or look at it and say okay what what do I want? You know, okay, here's a two hundred dollar bonus for signing up. Uh, like city, the city double cash card has you know one to three percent back, and they pay you uh, when you spend, or they give you the one percent when you spend, and they give it to you again when you pay your bill. So it's a, a incentive, and um, that's interesting. A, oh. Yeah, you know, and then there's some other the Capital One Quicksilver cash rewards one and a half percent on everything cash back. There's no caps. Yeah. You really need to look at that look cap. At that cap. That's right. Yep. Because lots of them will just limit you. Uh, and that now, are these you are these business cards? Because I no, had a, they're just regular cards. Okay. Because I had an issue like when I was going through this recently, and I wound up with that Chase Inc. Business Unlimited credit card. I, it, there were options for personal cards that I that were more attractive to me. But mm. if I wanted it in the business, you know, yeah, it, associated yeah. with the business where I could have employee cards and things like yes. that, yes. then, you know, my options were different. I don't want to say they yeah. were limited, but they were different. And sure. so that's where I wound up with the, cause I saw that city double cash. I'm like, Oh, I kind of like that. And then I looked, I'm like, ah, that, that one doesn't pan out the same way if I go the business route, but that chase Inc business card was like, that's the one. So yeah, you yeah. gotta, yeah. you gotta look cause they're look at it. like the Bonvoy cards personal and business they're both available and basically the same right like you right. you know in terms of the rewards 
with some of these others, it's like sometimes they're just not even available as a business card. Yeah. So you just got to be aware. And, and if you look at limits as well, one of the ways you can get around those limits is that you can get a card and your wife can get a card. Yes. And so we've done that a number of times and it expands your, you know, uh, your spending power and all, and all that. So, so there's, there's all kinds of ways to kind of hack the system. Um, a, I, there's another annex called NX Blue Cash Preferred, and there's some really nice sign-up uh, bonuses for that one as well, and some very interesting. Um, that one has 20% off Amazon purchases for the first six months, and there's some caps in there. I think it, it's not a huge amount of money, but sure. it's something. Um, and another card I really like is if you're a Costco purchase, uh, person, you know, they have this Costco Anywhere Visa. You get... And if you're buying lots of gas, maybe you're you're out in trucks if you're in that kind of business or you're driving salespeople around, I don't know. But you get 4% back on gas purchases up to $7,000 uh, oh. annually. That could be significant. Uh, and, and then you get another 2% back on Costco purchases and 1% on everything. And you can either get cash if you want. Uh, they give you a reward uh, certificate. You can cash it in or you can use it at, at Costco, whatever you want. But I right, think it's right. uh, it, it's it's a good card. And we're going to put, we'll put all this up on businessshow.co for you. And uh, where, where's it going to be, Dave? What's the URL going to be? Uh, it'll be businessshow.co slash rewards cards. Perfect. Right? Um, yeah, that sounds great. Businessshow.co slash rewards cards cards sure uh that sounds great we'll get it to you if we and can, if we can come up with something better we'll we'll yeah, put it absolutely. in both places yeah that's right perfect perfect and one of the key takeaways you know this is something that you really need to do for yourself and your family for your kids as soon as you possibly can because i know you're spending the money anyway and everything every time you spend a dollar you should ask can i use that card there you know uh my wife used to just was a zealot of it at the time. Like, wait, we're going to the movies. We're using this card. We're going to yeah. go <laughs> to the drive through. We're using the card, no cash for this stuff. But the key takeaway is this concept only works if you pay these cards in full each month or, you know, interstatement as well, because you can't carry a balance because you're going to get killed on the interest. Right. If you, oh, yeah. if you need to carry a balance and use it for financing, well, that's a different, search a different type of card you're looking for the lowest interest rate or you can use like amex has a, a card that i really like called the plum where you get you, you charge everything up same thing no limits they'll give you the, that card has had the highest limit on it or well, the highest uh charging capacity is i think they call it of any card i've ever had uh and you know hundreds of thousands of dollars interesting if you pay it off within 10 days of your statement you get a 1.5 percent cash back which is um, awesome. If you decide that, wow, I'm tapped this month, I, I'm not going to be able to pay it off early. You can carry a balance for 60 days with zero interest. Oh, wow. And that could be a big deal if you're buying, like I mentioned, buying products and doing, you know, I used to buy tons of store returns from places like Best Buy and Target and you name it, Staples. And all those big companies would take our credit card once we had a relationship with them. And, you know, so if you need to charge a hundred thousand dollars and you could carry it for 60 days, that's a big deal. Oh yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll link that plum card in there as well. So, so that tactic or that, that concept is different than, you know, uh, and, and, but you can also run them parallel, right? We, we have both, we have the plum and, uh, you know, a standard that Bonvoy American Express, and they both have just allowed us to live a charmed life well beyond, uh, you know, typical earnings and, and people all, everybody would always say, how do you guys do it? How do you fly to Italy first class and this, and for this day and all this, like, and I'll just say, well, let me show you. Yeah. I don't pay, I don't pay cash for those. Now, much harder to do it if you're, uh, you know, just a regular person doing it in your personal life, but you can still do you it. You can still it'll do just, it. Yeah. It'll you just, just take gotta, a little longer. Yeah, yeah. You just gotta be a little, yeah, that's right. Now I'm paying my son's tuition, uh, with my card and there, there's no fees. It's another thing you'll see some now. Some colleges more, don't, don't charge a fee. Some many yeah. do, but some many don't. do. That's right. My daughter's, uh, in, in Marymount Manhattan, they charged a flat $50 the first year. It's unbelievable. 
phenomenal. So we oh, charge that. Fantastic. Yeah. The next year they started 3%. Oh, uh, my, my son doesn't charge anything. So it's great. I think that's awesome, man. Yeah. This, so, yeah. This is good. So look at that. If you have tips, if we miss things, if we didn't mention a card that you love feedback at business show.co, uh, we'd love to hear from you. We'll get this, uh, you know, credit card information up on at business show.co slash rewards cards so you can review it and uh we'd love to hear from you yeah we uh, yeah absolutely let us know what your favorite is i we you know we hit some of the highlights here but certainly not even all of the highlights and definitely not all of them so what do you use feedback at business show.co we'd love to know thanks so much for listening folks make sure to check out our sponsor of course linkedin.com slash sbs and uh hey keep uh keep living that charmed life these credit cards are going to help Fine, Italy, first class. Doesn't get any better than that. It's not. <laughs> <laughs>